Knowing BJ, she's probably having a drinking competition with a robot somewhere by now. What was I doing in Hoofington, of all places? What happened while I was stuck in that damned cage Aquila put me in? How long was I even out? All those questions were running through my head as I slowly walked down the broken up road that led towards the looming city in the distance. I wasn't moving very fast. I wanted to run, but thanks to my EFS, I knew that would be a bad idea. On each side of the road, somewhere out in the vast field of bones, red lines were showing up on my EFS. From the occasional growl or cry, I had a feeling they were ghouls. How long has it been since I've been worrying about ghouls? I didn't see them often, New Pegasus. Even if I did, they didn't bother me much. My armor and weapons were capable of taking care of the monsters. Now, though, I was without armor or weapons. And, just to add the cherry to the shitstorm cake, my magic was almost useless. I could use my telekinesis, but not much else. Whatever Quilla did before she took my body back again was making it hard to pull on my magic. It almost felt like she cast too powerful of a spell, and now I was left with a small amount to use. Either that, or she was blocking my magic right now. Either way, it wasn't going to let me get out of this place or back to my friends. I tried to think of everything I could remember about what I heard about Hoofington since I left Stable 28, but sadly I never paid much attention to it when it came to talking about the place. I remembered Aura said it was evil or something like that. Others said you could make your fortune here or die trying. None of that was helpful, but the other thing I could remember about Hoofington was a mare they called Security. From how the radio ponies talked about her, she seemed like a pony much like myself, one who helped others. Though that didn't mean much, DJ Pony and Mr. New Pegasus both bent the truth a little and put me in a better light. The security pony could be a nut job who just happened to like killing monsters while drinking and singing shanties. Guess I'll have to find out for myself what this security is like if I happen to run into her while I'm here. I said quietly as I walked my way down the road. What I really needed is a weapon and some armor. Hell, caps would be nice too. That was a problem with what Aquila had done. I had nothing. Even less than I had when I left my home. And if being unarmed, magically disabled, and naked wasn't enough, it was starting to rain and get colder. More than anything, I needed shelter. And a way to get back home. I needed to find out what Aquila did while I was stuck in the cage. Really, I just needed to see Aura and tell her how sorry I was for what I did. Then tell everything I learned from Aquila's... better half. I couldn't try to kill myself again. That would lead to Aquila taking me over once more. I couldn't have that, and I couldn't let her do whatever it was she was planning. She was up to something. Why else should she send me this far away? I sighed, then checked my pip buck to see if the map would help me at all. My eyes went wide as I brought it up. There were at least 15 locations already on the map. Mom never came here while well, she had the Mark II, so if the locations in Hoofington were marked, that meant only one pony could have been there, before the Mark II's memory must have kept the information stored in it, even with a new user. Sweetie Belle was the only other pony apart from Mom, and myself who used the Mark II outside of Stable 9. She must have visited the locations a long time ago. The Mark II even updated the names of some places as the years went on. I still have no idea how they knew how to do that. But I had to be right, because I'm sure that town far off on the map with the others couldn't have been called Meat Locker back during the war. At least I hope it wasn't. I started to look through the locations closer to me, seeing if there was one that would be useful. The closest was a location called Mega Mart, and just down the road was a town called Chapel, another called Flank, and a few others. There was even a couple of stables marked on the map. The ones that seemed to be closest was Stable 99. From what I could tell, Sweetie Belle herself had visited these locations during her time here. I was tempted to go check out that old stable, since it was only half a day's walk away. If the stable was abandoned, I might be able to at least find armor and weapons in it. At the very least, have shelter for a while. But the problem was, from where the stable was located, if it was occupied and I couldn't get in, it would be too far to come back this way, at least safely. Damn it! I guess I'll have to either head Chapel or Megamart, I said, then yawned. Damn. 
I was already tired, and I'd only just taken control back of my body again for a couple of hours. I sighed, then started walking again. Maybe if I was lucky, I'd make it a kind of shelter before it gets too late and before I pass out. Come on, Shadow, you can do this, I said as I pushed on, still trying to do my best to keep myself awake. I really didn't want to sleep right now, because I know what I'll do as soon as I do. I could still feel Shining Star fighting under the pillow as I placed it over his face. I could see the fear on Night Blossom's face as her throat was cut by Wind Thrasher, feeling my friend's fangs seep dink deep into my flesh. I don't want to reload those memories. So I kept going forward, following the road and keeping my eyes out for enemies as best I could. That was getting easier as I slowly left what my Mark II decided to call the Boneyard and found myself closer to the mark on the map that was set at Megamart. I just hope that it's not an old mall that's overrun by ghouls or raiders. Even if I didn't have any of my caps, it'd be nice to find some pony that can help me even a little. Maybe if I was lucky, some pony would know how I could get home. Well, I thought about what to do. I figured I could at least see if anything was being reported by DJ Pony right now. I wish I could listen to Mr. New Pegasus, but his signal didn't go this far. So I flipped through the station and listened to a mare sing a song I hadn't heard before. I kind of liked it. The mare had a beautiful voice, and she sounded like she'd been performing her entire life. I wondered why I hadn't heard this song before. I mean, yeah, I didn't listen to the radio that much, but I'd also never heard a lot of repeats so far, and this had to be new. Sure enough, when DJ Pony came on, he confirmed my suspicions. Same as ever, he came back on with his in-your-face booming voice. Hello, Wastelanders! That was a newer song by the beautiful and talented Velvet Remedy, who recorded that new song for you here in my studio in Ten Pony Tower. Now all of you know what time it is. That's right, it's time for the news. Let's start with what's going on closer to home. At least for me, that is. Ten Pony is still surrounded by Red Eyes Thugs, keeping our scavengers and traders from getting in and out. Now don't you all worry about good old DJ Pony. They're mostly blowing out a lot of smoke and some hot air. But even with Red Eyes goons knocking on our door, I've still managed to get a visit from a wonderful toaster repair pony once again. She doesn't seem to have much of a problem getting past those slavers. He chuckled to himself for a moment, like the rest of us were missing some kind of inside joke. Then he continued... Out on the hoof, it looks like things have gone from bad to worse. Security herself hasn't been seen around the city, and factions of all kinds are starting to make more trouble for the ponies living around there. Just like in my early report, I'm advertising everyone stay as far away from Hoofington as you can, if you can. Great! Wish I could stay away, but I have no idea how to get home! I yelled as he continued. Lastly, I have some news from New Pegasus. I reported three days ago about a powerful blast of magic being spotted closer to San Polimo Gorge. The reports at this time were that the courier was spotted at the center of that explosion of magic, and she hadn't been seen since. Like security from the hoof, no pony knows what happened to her or where she went. After three days, news has reached me that my friend, Mr. New Pegasus, that the courier may have been killed in the blast. Her companions have been seen traveling back to New Pegasus, but the little mare that must become a hero, to most, isn't with them. He was silent for a moment, and when he started talking again, I could hear a bit of sadness in his voice. I'm sorry, children, but old DJ's feeling mighty guilty. Over the past few weeks, I haven't been very fair to the courier because of some of her actions, but I've recently found new evidence about why she did what she did. The town she destroyed, Appleton, was a mistake. The weapon used was something she thought was a toy or a prop gun. She was about to die from her injuries. She took from pride and wanted one last act of defiance before she met her maker. She did try to stop the weapon from going off, but it was too late to stop it. He paused again and looked in, and took in a deep breath and continued. The second time she used that powerful weapon was her idea, and one I'm sure she now regrets. I still don't have all the information on what led up to the destruction of Mill City Tower, 
but I do know that she wasn't in her right mind at the time. One of her friends almost died because of the Enclave, and someone she loves with all her heart, and at the time she thought was dead. Now, I don't know if this doesn't excuse her actions fully, but I do know that sometimes we all make poor decisions. I heard him sniff again, like he was trying to not cry. DJ being sentimental? That was strange, but I couldn't think about it much, because it continued. We all remembered what I reported not long ago with the Stable Dweller and Arbu. Now, the new Pegasus area might have lost a mare who was forced to do things she may not have been ready for. I gave her the name Courier. I may have forced this pony into trying to do good, to do better, to help ponies when all she may have wanted to do was live a normal life. After starting her on that path, I didn't put much faith in the young mare who bore the duster of Equestrian Express, who helped save Cartwheel from raiders, the mare who gave it her all to help protect ponies she'd never met before. I do hope you're alive and well, Courier. I hope the reports about your death are false. And if you're still alive, all I want you to know is that you have my respect and apologies for not believing in you. I've watched the good you've done for a new Pegasus, and the ponies around that area. I've even watched you as you helped the Enclave work out a truce with the kingdom and more. So has Mr. New Pegasus. He believes in you too. And if you are still alive, I hope that one day I can meet you, so I can get the true story of who you are, and why you fight from your own mouth. Good luck, safe travels, and let the goddesses watch over you. I was taken aback as DJ didn't even announce his next song. He just cut the transmission of his live feed and started up an older Sweetie Belle song without even a goodbye. I was even more shocked that he recanted his other report about me being dangerous to the wasteland. If I ever get out of Hoofington, I think I'll take him up on his offer. I'd like to give him my side of the story for once. I let the ponies across the wasteland know the truth. My truth. Not what others think about the truth. One day, I'll get my story out there for a pony to hear. That is, if I survive this place and Aquila. And that was what I had to deal with right now. So I kept moving on. As I walked down the road, I noticed a building set off the road. From what I could tell by my EFS, no pony was in the small place. But from the look of it, it was only recently occupied. I moved closer and saw a sign over the building saying Pony Joes. And my Mark II kind of dinged. Words on my EFS confirming the location. I heard thunder in the distance, and a few more drops of rain started to fall as my muzzle got closer to the place. I sighed again and figured it'd serve as a place to spend the rest of the night, at least. I pushed the door open and stepped inside the building. My nose was hit right away by the smell of death and decay as soon as I passed the threshold of the small building. From what I could tell, the place was clean. At least, to what a wastelander would consider clean. But by the smell, I had a feeling that some pony had cleaned this place up a little, and not too long ago. I did my best to ignore this, however, and as soon as I stepped inside, the rain started falling harder outside. I was going to have to deal with the smell for now. I took a moment to check the place out. One thing I never did often since I left my stable was scrounge for stuff. From what I know of most ponies that lived in the wasteland, scavenging was part of survival. I'd been lucky in my travels and never really needed to. A good chunk of what I gathered before now had been fed to me on a silver platter. But now I needed anything that would help me while I was out here. I started looking through anything I could, trying to find loot. While I was searching around, I found bits in this building's past. The building turned out to be a restaurant. Though nowadays, food service would be a problem with the destroyed tables, smell of decay, and mold and death. Can't forget about the death. I checked the cash register first, and found nothing, so I moved to the cabinets, and apart from a couple of rotten packets of food, a can of cram, and one pre-war bit, nothing was worth taking. Even the pre-war bit wasn't worth much. A small can of bits could be sold to most merchants for a few caps, but it was mostly worthless coin. From what I knew, they were mostly used to get sparkle cola bottles out of old vending machines. I still took the bit just in case, and I moved to check under the tables. In a broom closet, under the counter, and even in the stove I found in the back. 
Nothing at all. I guess ponies had already looted this place a long time ago. I was about to give up when I saw something glinting from under the stove. Bending over, I saw an old security baton was lodged under it. Using my magic, however painful, I pulled it out and looked it over. It looked like it came out of a stable, but I couldn't tell which one. It was in terrible shape, too, but it could still be used to hit something if I needed to. Luckily for me, Aquila had acquired a satchel while she was using my body, so I had a place to store my few treasures. Okay, one gold bit and a rusty, almost broken baton may not be treasures to most, but to me it was better than nothing. I made my way back to the front of the restaurant and decided to use one of the booths to serve as a bed for now. I noticed, as I made my way back to the front, that there was a little blood on the floor that some pony missed when they were cleaning this place, and I shivered. Whatever happened here, I didn't want to know. So I settled down in the booth and closed my eyes. But I didn't sleep. I needed rest, but sleep wasn't something I was going to let happen. I'll just close my eyes for a bit and try to think of a way to get home. Mom? Can you tell me one of your stories tonight? Shining Star said to me as he jumped up and down at the kitchen table. I guess I can do that, I said, smiling. I got up and followed my son back to his room. Then everything changed. My son was struggling under the pillow I was holding down over his face. His little hooves were trying to hit my forelegs away as he struggled to breathe. My heart was racing as I pushed down harder, doing my best to hold back the tears as my son's life slowly slipped away. No! I screamed as I jumped up from the booth. The nightmare I was just having still fresh in my mind. I looked around, trying to figure out where I was. Then it came back to me. I was in Hoofington. Lightning flashed again, just outside the windows, as a storm raged on outside. Another loud boom filled the air a moment later. I noticed then that I was freezing. A draft was coming in, dropping the temperature in the small building. I shivered, then got back to my hooves, trying to see if I could find anything to use as a blanket, with no luck. I shook my head, still trying to forget the memory from that fucking cage Aquila had trapped me in. I could tell myself, until I was blue in the face, that it was all a dream, and it was real. But my mind could remember every detail from that place, and it felt real enough. As the wind howled outside and the lightning struck, echoing thunder across the hoof, I noticed something strange. A small thumping noise coming from the back of the restaurant. I pulled the shitty baton from a satchel and slowly made my way to the back. Peeking around the corner, I turned on the pip light, checking to see what was going on. From what I could tell, there was no pony there. Then I saw the back door shaking with each thump. I lifted the baton higher in my magic as the door shook again. Who's there? The thumping sound stopped, and a high-pitched giggle came from just outside. <laughs> I warn you, I'm armed in here, I said, taking a step back from the door. I waited for a moment, but no pony said anything. Hello? Nothing happened. My mind's playing tricks on me, I said as I sighed and started to put the pot ton away. The window in front of the shop blew apart as some pony came crashing through. I twisted around and saw some pony getting up from the ground. It was a mare in torn leather armor. She was covered in small cuts from crashing through the window, and she looked like she'd lost her mind a long time ago. She smiled at me, giggling insanely as she limped towards me. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Aren't you hungry? She said, moving closer to me. I noticed that one of her forelegs looked like she'd been chewing on it. Some of her flesh was even missing, and her leg looked infected. I took a step back as I said, I am, but I don't have any food. She licked her lips and giggled again, sending a chill up my spine. I see plenty of food. <laughs> you have plenty of flesh on you. Stay away from me. I said, lifting the baton. She pulled out a rusty hunting knife. It's okay. I can make it quick. I'm so hungry. Then she charged me. Well, tried to. That bad leg of hers made her move slower than I'm sure she could have before. 
I dodged to one side as she attacked. My magic, bringing the baton around, did crack her in the back of the head. She pitched forward, her face meeting the edge of the counter. A sickening crack filled the room, followed by a spray of blood. The mare fell to the ground, her knife sliding away from her body. I picked it up with my magic, dropping the baton at the same time, my magic still crippled, backing away from her. The fuck is wrong with you? I asked as the mare twitched, then slowly turned her head to look at me. I shuddered as I saw her ruined face. Her nose had been smashed in and a few of her teeth were knocked out. One eye was swollen and looked ready to pop right out of her head. She tried to say something through a shattered jaw. <laughs> then she tried to get up, but something was very wrong with her. She only got one hoof under her before she fell again, giggling through her bloody muzzle. I took the knife and... She dropped and jammed it into her good eye, putting an end to her giggling and suffering. Ripping the knife out quickly, I backed away from her still twitching body. I sat back against the wall, shivering from the adrenaline rush. I closed my eyes, letting it pass, ignoring the wind and rain coming through the now shattered front window. After a few moments passed, my body started to calm down. I took in a deep breath and got back to my hooves. Okay, Shadow, you can't keep moping about like this. Need to get home, somehow. I'm a courier, for goddess's sake. I can get through this. I moved over to the body of the strange mare and started to see if she had anything I could use. Sadly, the mare didn't have much on her. No food, meds, and her barding was useless in the state it was in. She did have some caps, though. About fifty. But hell, none of it helps. I looked back at the raging storm and sighed. Guess I have no choice. No telling when this is going to let up, and I really don't want to stay around here. Before I left, I picked the baton I dropped and put it in my satchel. I walked out into the pouring rain, looking down, and my pit buck started to set a marker on my map for the icon labeled Megamart. Ignoring the rain, I started to make my way down the road. Keeping an eye on my EFS after the encounter with that strange mare, I wasn't going to take any chances. It was one of the smarter things I've done so far. I hadn't even got a full mile when no less than ten red bars showed up on my EFS. I stopped when they did and pulled a baton and knife out of my satchel, ready for anything. My head throbbed a little from the magic's weakening state, but I ignored it. My blood went cold as I heard the same giggling coming down the road, this time from multiple throats. Lightning flashed in the distance, and sure enough, I could just make out the silhouette of at least ten ponies in the distance. I moved off the road slowly, keeping both my weapons ready and my magical grip. The painful part of the headache passing, I started moving slowly, ensuring that what I was going to do if these ponies were like the mare I killed back in Pony Joe's. I made my way slowly towards where the ponies were, keeping off the road so they wouldn't see me. As I moved closer, I could just make out one of them speaking over the wind and the rain. Where did Wiz get off to this time? I felt a bit of deja vu as memories of an encounter much like this when I first left Stable 28 hit me. The raiders I killed and later found their friends hunting me. Another stallion giggled to himself, then made a slurping sound like he was sucking something wet through his teeth. <laughs> no idea. She said she was hungry. I think she went hunting. The first stallion growled, saying, We're all hungry. That doesn't give her an excuse to go off on her own. Even with security missing, we need to stick together. I lowered myself down more, watching as they walked by the road. Lightning flashed again in the distance, illuminating them. I could see even from here. They were almost as disheveled as the mare had been, most of them in ruined leather armor, except the one in the front who had metal armor on. He must be their leader. Out of all of them, he looked better than they did, at least, and seemed to have most of his wits about him. They were almost past me when the leader pony stopped. A mare in the group looked around for a moment, then back at the leader, saying, <laughs> Boss, what's the holdup? He looked around for a moment, then said, Some ponies here. Lots of ponies here, boss, one of the others said, giggling insanely. Got a bunch of us following you. He turned around and slammed his hoof into the pony's face. I know that shithead. I meant some pony else. The pony who 
Leader Hit giggled more. Oh, it's got your panties in a bunch, boss. Maz went wide as I watched the leader pony slam his hoof into the other again and again, saying, I've warned you time and time again to keep your muzzle shut. He kept stomping until the other pony's head was nothing more than a puddle of goo and bones. Then he chuckled to himself, moved his muzzle down, and ate the chunk of the pony's brain. I felt my stomach turn, witnessing that, and almost threw up. Time to eat every pony, but make it fast. I had to put a hoof over my muzzle as every one of them descended on the twitching body. Thank the goddesses for the dark night, because I could barely make out the sight of them ripping flesh off their dead companion. Even when the lightning flashed in the distance, they were mostly shadowy silhouettes. Nothing could be done about it. The sound, though. I listened as flesh was ripped from the body. Ponies chewing on meat and that insane giggling in between the bites. The leader took a few small bites himself, but let the rest of his horrid feast. While they did, he started looking around as if he was searching for me in the distance. It was then that I noticed, as lightning flashed again, a pip buck on his foreleg. That realization hit me right as his eyes looked in my direction. He started to chuckle as he slowly walked off the road. <laughs> what an unlucky day for whoever's out there. Why don't you come out and join us? There's plenty to go around, I promise. I knew I couldn't hide from him, not with that pip buck he had on. So I said, No thanks, I'm not much for eating flush of ponies. He chuckled to himself again. I was like that once, I have to admit. It's growing on me over the past couple of weeks. I've even managed to keep most of my sanity, unlike most of my companions here. Come on, out of there and tell me who you are. You sound like a young mare to me. We could use some new blood. I'm just trying to get to Megamart. I don't want any trouble. I said, still trying to keep myself out of his sight. Megamart, huh? Not much there right now after the attack on security a few days ago. What's your name, sweetheart? He asked as he slowly made his way closer to me. Not sure why, but I didn't really feel like giving this name to my stallion. So I lied. Silver Snip, why? Silver Snip, it's nice to meet you. My name's Ditch. I'm the leader of the small band of what ponies around here call raiders. I'd be willing to let you live if you come with us and join my crew. I do have room at the moment, seeing as how one of my companions here decided to come down with a case of stupidity and death. He said with a chuckle. I'm sorry, Ditch. I'm not looking to join any raiders today. Leave me alone and be on your way. I won't tell any pony what I saw. I said. He laughed again, and said, I'm afraid you only have two choices. Either you join us, or you become tomorrow's lunch. One of the mares broke off from her meal and walked over to the boss. Boss, maybe she knows where Wiz is. Good point, Jess. He said, looking back to where I was hiding. I may have a third option. My wife, Wiz, went off ahead of us, and we haven't seen her for a few hours. If you know where she's at, or even where she was heading to be, I'd be fine with letting you leave. She's going a little mad, sadly, but I love her dearly, and I want to make sure she's okay. I could feel myself shiver as I thought about the crazy mare I'd killed. I... I'm not sure who you're talking about. I didn't want to deal with these nut jobs right now. I would have teleported away, but I didn't seem to know the area at all. And I don't even think that I could with this, my horn like this now. I did seem to sense something was wrong, because his chuckling stopped as he said, You have no idea, huh? Strange, because I have a feeling you know exactly who I'm talking about. I can hear it in your voice. I didn't see any mare. Not alive, that is. I wanted to stop for the night in a small restaurant on my way here, but it looked like a fight broke out. There was a dead mare in there, so I decided to keep going. I lied, hoping they would buy it. Brown coat and an orange mane? He asked. Yeah, that sounds like the mare I saw. 
I said, deciding to keep the lie going by adding another. Some pony had wrote with her blood on the wall, said something like, don't mess with security. I'm not from around here, so I have no idea who that is, but I took it as a sign not to linger. The mare from before took a step back from her boss, saying, Security boss, I thought she was missing. We should get out of here before she finds us. The boss pony didn't seem like he was buying it, however. In fact, he looked enraged as he took a few steps forward. Security, huh? Funny, because what I know about that mare, she's not one to kill one raider and leave a message like that behind. I'm thinking you killed Wiz, and now you're trying to keep us from killing you. Okay, I'm done with that shit. I took hold of my weapons again and jumped out from hiding. The leader pony was ready, however. He moved his foreleg with his pip buck and blocked my attack. The baton broke as it cracked down on the hard casing of his pip buck. I took a step back, shocked for a moment as the metal shaft of the baton flew through the night. The leader just grinned, saying, Hello there. He slammed his hoof into my face, throwing me back a few feet. I rolled as I landed and came to a stop. With the knife, I took off Wiz, grinning a little as he advanced on me. You know, at first I was scared of dealing with you strange raiders, but honestly I don't see much difference between you and the ones back home. He grinned like a mad pony, and said, Oh, you have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. In Hoofington, we eat ponies. All ponies that aren't one of us. You, my dear, look like a delicious treat. Maybe but I think you'll find me a little harder to take on than you think, I said, acting more confident than I felt. Honestly, I had no idea what I was going to do. I got lucky with the raiders and cartwheel, and then I had help from Sapphire and Stardust. I slashed the knife at his face, but he jumped back, then twisted around and tried to kick me in the face. Luckily for me, it was still raining, and he slipped on the ground, losing his balance. I took the opportunity to run like a little bitch. Yep, that's right. Shadow Star, the courier, so-called hero of New Pegasus, is going to run away from a bunch of crazed cannibal raiders. Aura would call this a tactical retreat, but I called it what it really was. I was a scared mare who knew I couldn't risk fighting all of them with no armor and an old knife. I only got as far as the road before a shot rang out, a bullet ripping through my rear leg. I screamed as I fell to the ground. Blood sprang on the ground as the bullet tore through me. Kill this bitch so we can get out of here, I heard the leader pony saying. I tried to pull my magic to cast an explosion spell, but yet again nothing happened. I knew I was fucked now. I twisted around as I heard some of the raiders running towards me, giggling like mad ponies. One jumped for me, and I slammed the knife into his eye. I ducked under another clumsy attack and slashed his rear hooves as he landed. I then stabbed another pony when he got too close. A bigger stallion grabbed me around the neck, trying to strangle me. I slammed my pet buck into his face. He screamed through shattered teeth, letting me go as he did. I twisted around so I could stab him while he was otherwise distracted. A hoof came around and caught me in the throat. I was thrown back, giggling, gagging, and hacking for air as I fell to the ground. One of the raiders landed on top of me, giggling madly while he started to strangle me. Another opened his muzzle, getting ready to rip flesh off my foreleg. I tried again to activate one of my spells, but my stupid horn just didn't seem to care that I was going to die and be eaten. Nope, my horn wanted to go on vacation, have a few drinks, meet a nice mare or stallion, have a little fun. It didn't seem to care that I was in mortal danger that I was in right now! The pony who was about to bind my foreleg was only an inch away when something slammed into him, throwing him back. Before I could even register what happened, a curled red tail wrapped around the neck of the pony on top of his. His eyes went wide for a moment, as the tail straightened around his throat and his grip on my throat slackened. For a moment, I couldn't figure out what was wrong until I saw blood flowing from his body. Then I saw what looked like razor wire that was worked into the tail digging into his flesh, his body flying off mine. Whoever just came into... Save me, throwing his body away. I coughed and looked over to see a mare with a cream-colored coat and red stripes on her body, a bushy mane and tail attacking the raiders. She had hoof claws, I could tell, and moved like a demon. She used one of her claws to decapitate a mare who tried to charge her. Before the body even hit the ground, the mare bucked so hard 
that a stallion's face caved in on itself. She laughed as another pony tried to slam a pule cue into her, but she ducked under it, then gutted the pony, his guts falling to the ground in a heap as he screamed in pain. As the mare slaughtered the raiders, I got back to my hooves, picked up the knife, and ran to assist. At least my magic was still able to hold my weapons. I jumped on the back of another pony, knocking him to the ground. As he fell, I buried the knife into his skull. The mare looked over at me as the stallion fell and grinned. Nice one, kid. Then she twisted around and sliced through the neck of another pony as he tried to charge her. I turned to where the leader pony went, only to see him aiming a rifle at the mare who was finishing off his last friends. I started to yell, Watch out! I was too late. By the time I opened my muzzle, the leader pony fired. The mare was just turning to see what I was saying when the bullet went through her head. She collapsed on like a sack of potatoes, her blood joining that of the pony she killed. The rain was letting up now, and only a small drizzle was coming down. As I looked over the body of the strange-looking mare who saved my life, only to die trying, I rounded on the leader, who was seeming to be the only one left alive. Why the hell did you do that? Do what? <laughs> Take out that bitch? She killed my companions. What should I have done? He said, aiming the rifle at me, his muzzle on the bit of the trigger. Now it's your turn. God, it's this damned fucking asshole. I hate it when they shoot me in the head. I heard the mare say from behind me. The raider boss and I both looked to see the mare getting back to her hooves. A pink glow coming from the hole in her head. She started to choke, then gag, then cough as she spat the bloody bullet to the ground. What the hell is she? I've only seen one pony who can take a bullet to the head and live, and tell about it, and that was my uncle. He wasn't even made out of flesh and blood, so he made sense. If I was scared, the raider pony was even worse. He dropped his rifle and pissed himself as he took a few steps away from the mare who was popping her neck, glaring over at him. You're that reaper, he said. She smiled and made a little bow, as she said. Rampage, at your service. I'll admit you're a bit better off than most raiders around here. I don't know if you're really lucky as not to be gone as far rest as the rest of those guys, or really unlucky because you ran into me and shot me in the head. What are you? I asked, taking a step back. She looked over at me for a moment. Quiet, kid. Let me deal with this shit-eater first. She said, then looked back at the leader. I'm gonna go with unlucky, because... She lunged at the stallion, who tried to turn and run, but he wasn't even close to fast enough. She slammed into the ground, then started to pound his face into the ground as hard as she could. I really hate it when ponies do that! Do you know how much it fucking hurts? No, it feels like this! His face was already nothing but a bloody smear on the ground, but she kept on ramming his head into the ground until it shattered into a buttery piece of goo. She sighed, then got off the leader pony's muzzle and sat back. She pulled a tin from her bag she had and popped open a couple of pills, or something, into her mouth, then chomped down on them. I was about to take another step back when she spoke again. What's your name, kid? She asked as she looked back at me. Who? Me? I asked, shaking a little as I watched the mare go from a killing machine to calm in a matter of seconds. You see any other fillies around here? She asked, her pink eyes seeming to look deep inside of me. Silver... Silver Snip? I said, still using the fake name and of my dead mare friend. One of her eyebrows went up. What's your real name? That is, I started to say, but she cut me off. Listen. My head hurts, and I'm not in the best of moods right now, I can tell you're lying. I don't know why you think me knowing your real name will matter so much, but I hate being lied to, she said. How did you survive that bullet to the head? There's no way any pony can live through that, I said, trying to change the subject. Long story, uh, most of it, I don't even know and understand. Let's just say that it's impossible to kill me, trust me. I've tried every way I can think of to do it, and nothing sticks. Now, what's your name, kid? 
and why is a filly wandering this close to a pony Joe's during a storm at night? She said, trying and sounding tired. Fine. It's Shadow Star, or just Shadow. I really don't care, I said. And as for what I'm doing out here, to be honest, I have no idea. I woke up here a few hours ago, trying to find a place where I could find some pony to help me get back home, I said. She laughed. You chose a shitty place to wander then, kid. I frowned. I'm not a kid. I'm an adult, I'll have you know. Rampage. What kind of name is Rampage, anyway? She laughed again. So, you're just a shrimp, then. And I chose my name since I don't remember what mine used to be. And it fits my lifestyle. Now, why are you out here? You wouldn't believe me if I even told you. I said with a sigh, sitting down a few feet away from her. Try me, kid. I mean, Shadow. I've seen some fucked up shit over the years, and even more so while I've traveled with my friend Blackjack. She said, getting back to her hooves. You can tell me about it while we walk. Thanks for your help and all, but do you think you can point me in the right direction to find some place where I can find a pony to help me get home? I asked. Not sure if some pony Mega Mark can help you get home, but I can at least show you the way. I got up as well, but hesitated. You're not just tricking me to follow me, you, so you can do something to me later, are you? Rampage laughed, then shook her head. If I wanted to do something to you, Shadow, you'd be dead already. She started to walk down the road, the bodies of the fallen raiders forgotten. I asked, following her, then why did you help me? What, would you rather I'd have left you to the raiders? She asked. No. I was just wondering why you came to help. From what I've heard about Hoofington, ponies around here don't do that often, I said. Most don't. Some will only do it to make you a slave after, or others will join in to help the raiders so they can eat you, she said with a laugh. But I helped because I saw what I thought was a filly in trouble. And I don't like it much when foals are hurt. I help them whenever I can. Honestly, you're lucky I came alone. I would have been fine if I had my armor and weapons, I said with a sigh. Where are you from, anyway? She asked. New Pegasus, I answered. New Pegasus, huh? I've heard that place is kind of nice. Shit, I feel sorry for you being all the way out here, Rampage said, her pink eyes looking over at me. New Pegasus is nice, mostly, but has its problems, just like everywhere else in the wasteland, I said. Yeah, I'm sure. But comparing a place like New Pegasus to Hoofington is like comparing a paper cut to jumping into a wood chipper. She said with a laugh. Trust me, I've tried it. Not a fun feeling. I cocked an eyebrow at her. Sure you did. Shadow, you shot me got shot in the head, right? She asked. Yeah, and I can't explain what I saw. Well, there has to be some trick to it. I said. Not really. Just a rock shoved into my guts that keeps me alive. It's a pain in the ass, too. Been trying to die for I don't know how long, though. Nothing takes, sadly, she said with a laugh. And that's kind of morbid, I replied. You have no idea. So tell me about you. How'd you end up in this shithole? She said as we walked. And don't lie to me. I'll know if you do lie. I'll bite off an ear. I sighed. Okay, but you won't believe me. And as she laughed again, I started to tell Rampage about myself. Okay, you're right. That story does sound way too fucked up to be real. Rampage said as we got closer to the huge building with ponies going in and out. But you didn't lie to me. So, this thing inside you sent you all the way to Hoofington. Why? I wish I knew. I have no idea what she's doing with my body while she was using it. I said. I just want to get home and make sure my friends are okay. I get that. But if your friends are as tough as they make you sound, I'm sure they're fine. That griffin friend of yours sounds like she's tough. Rampage said as we made our way down to the, what she had had to be Megamart. 
She is. But she also has the tenacity to do stupid stuff when someone she cares about is hurt. I said. Now that is something I've seen a lot lately. Blackjack will jump into the stupidest of situations to keep her friends safe. Even me, and I can't die. It's annoying, to be honest. She thinks just because she has mechanical legs and is the famous security mare that she's invincible. It's like she forgets that she nearly died only a few days ago. Rampage said as she pushed past a stallion who was looking at weapons set up on a table just inside the huge complex. Following, I asked, Wait, your blackjack friend is that mare being called security? I've heard her in New Pegasus a couple of times. Though I don't know much about her. I don't listen to the radio much, to be honest. I get sick of hearing things that I've done, being praised by DJ Pony and Mr. New Pegasus. You sound like Blackjack. She hates that shit, too. I think it's funny. So what strange name did DJ Pony give you? She asked. A courier, I said, then ran into Rampage's rear. She stopped moving when I said that. She turned to look at me in a dangerous voice as she said, Carrier, the psychotic pony who killed hundreds of ponies in a town. She blew up and did the same thing in a tower in the Midwest, Carrier. I just rolled my eyes. Yeah, and in my defense, I didn't mean to kill the ponies in Appleton. The weapon I used, I had no idea what it did. The second time, it was against the Enclave when I thought they killed my griffin friend. For a moment, I thought Rampage was going to do to me what she did to the raiders. Then she smiled and shrugged. I've done worse. So is Blackjack. That's the wasteland. Shit happens. She said. I was taken aback by that. Seriously, that doesn't bother you at all? She just chuckled to herself before saying, Oh, don't get me wrong. What she did is still stupid and demented in a small way. But worrying about it can't fix it. From what I can tell, you're not the kind of mare who wants to cause wanted destruction on ponies who are just trying to survive. Though I can say that DJ Pony doesn't hold you in the highest graces anymore. For some reason, that made me smile. Good, because I really don't care what he thinks about me. As long as I'm not uh, going out there and telling stories about me, then I don't care what he thinks. Then I remember the broadcast from earlier. Well, you may be wrong. He reported something a little while ago that made it sound like he's okay with me again. Damn it. One thing I can say about him is he doesn't lie. He only reports on things he believes to be true. Rampage said as she pushed past a few more ponies who were in her way, then turned sharply to her right and walked towards the yellow mare. Hey, bottle cap, you got a second? The mare looked over at us, and could see she had three bottle caps for a cutie mark. What do you want, Rampage? I thought you went off to find BJ. I did, but then I ran into this shrimp being attacked by raiders near Pony Joe's. She's trying to find her way home, and I figured if any pony knew who could find her transportation, it'd be you. Rampage said with a cocky grin. She looked Rampage over. Goddesses, you stink. And you're covered in blood and guts again. Couldn't you have at least washed some of that off before you came into my place? Rampage just laughed. Thank you. And no, the rain stopped before I had a chance to shower. Now, can you help Shadow or not? Bottlecap finally looked down at me. I'm not normally in the business of helping lost fillies find their way home. Especially stable ponies. Which stable did you wander out of? Because I know there aren't that many active stables anywhere near the hoof. I was about to ask why she thought it was a stable pony when I remembered I had the mark too. I sighed, saying, Stable 28's where I grew up, but I'm not from a stable per se. Also, I've been away from my stable for over two months now. And I'm not a filly, damn it! I'm just short. Bottlecap laughed. <laughs> damn, she's a cranky one, isn't she? She said as she looked back at Rampage. Been fun around me, Rampage said with a shrug. Nah, come on, I know you know some pony that might be able to help her. I don't have a lot of time to stick around here. I still need to find out why Blackjack's gone for so long. Knowing BJ, she 
is probably having a drinking competition with a robot somewhere by now, Bottle Cap said before looking back at me and sighing. Follow me to my office. Shadow, was it? Yeah, Shadow Star, but everyone just calls me Shadow, I said. Don't worry, Shadow, you'll be fine with Bottle Cap. But if you need a place to stay for a few days, head to chapel and tell Charity that I sent you. Rampage said, turning to leave. Thanks for the help, Rampage. But is there anything I can do to repay you? I asked before she could leave. She looked back over her shoulder, asking, Do you think you can kill me? That took me by surprise. But I ignored what I felt about her odd request and shook my head. I don't think so. She shrugged. And then I guess there's nothing I need from you. Good luck, kid. I mean, Shadow. I hope you find your friend. I said as she pushed her way through the ponies again. When she was gone, Bottle Cap led me to a small office. Sitting down at an old desk, then took a moment to look me over. Finally, she sighed and leaned back, asking, So, where are you from, and how do you intend to pay for your trip home? New Pegasus, and I'm not sure how I can pay for the trip home, but I'll do whatever I can to pay for it, I said. Her eyes went wide at that. Wait a second. You're from New Pegasus? How the hell did you get all the way out here, and why? It's a long story, best way to put it. I was taken here by some pony and dumped not far from that old restaurant, I said. I wasn't going to bother telling her about what really happened. Rampage had a hard enough time believing me, and she's fucking immortal. Slavers? Or did you piss off some enclave pony? Or were you part of a caravan? She asked. None of those things. I'm just a mare who works as a courier for the Equestrian Express. I said, not thinking the name Box Tapes Courier business would mean much out here. I was wrong. Box Tapes' eyes went wide as she said, You're that courier? A little shit like you worked for old Box Tape and was going around helping the ponies in that area. Okay, having Rampage know about me was one thing. Now this mirror knew who I was just by the name of Question Express. I cocked an eyebrow, asking, Why do you think I'm the courier? Do I look like a mayor could go around blowing up cities and taking down raider camps? She looked me over again. Not really. But that doesn't mean much, to tell you the truth. As to how I know you're her, that's because I know that a question express hasn't had a courier before the courier almost a year. My father used to do business with box tape back in the day, until one day the old book just couldn't find any pony to take a job with him due to the raiders around his town. Then one day we hear some mare in one of his dusters taking down that same camp. Later we hear kinds of stories about this mare saving ponies or blowing up towns or later a tower and more. I keep up with all the news feeds I can. It makes for good business if you know what's going around around the wasteland. At least you're not calling me a crazy pony or wanting me dead, I said with a sigh. I don't. But I know there's a price on your head from the Enclave and a few Steel Rangers, Bottlecap said. Wait, I have a bounty on my head? I asked, then thought about it. Okay, maybe that's not too shock. I have pissed off the Enclave more than once and a few Steel Rangers as well. Honestly, I'm surprised I haven't seen any problems with bounty hunters yet. Normally you would, Bottlecap said, leaning back in her seat. From what I've heard about the bounty, both of them, some group has made it known that if any bounty hunter tries for the bounty, they'll, they'll kill them. A group of ponies are protecting me? I asked. I don't know much about them. All I know is that they're renegades of the Enclave. They must be tough ponies to scare away any pony from taking over 20,000 cap bounty. My eyes went wide. 20,000? She laughed. And that's just the one of them from the Enclave. They want you dead or alive at this point. The one from the Steel Rangers is 45,000, but you have to be taken alive to them and all the way out to Los Alicorn. That took me by surprise. Not the Steel Ranger bounty. Sure, I didn't know what Wolfsbane had that many caps, but it was the Enclave one that I couldn't understand. Dad's the head of the council. He led Stratus and Nimbus. Also, he was in charge of overseeing the Crystal Empire and the Twin Cities. They couldn't put a bounty on my head without him knowing. Unless... When did the bounty from the Enclave start? 
Three weeks ago, around the time you destroyed that tower in Winnapolis. Bottle cap said with a shrug. Damn. So it wasn't recently, I said. I thought maybe Dad figured out after I was gone, and Aquila took over. I thought having me killed was the best way to save the wasteland. Morbid, but effective. He was thinking about the ponies in the wasteland, and not just his own daughter or feelings. Why do you sound so disappointed? Bottlecap asked. Because I know the High Council pony in that area. He's a friend of mine, and he wouldn't let any of his pegasi put a bounty on me. Unless it was three days ago, I said. Why does three days or three weeks matter? She asked. It's a long story. But if this was set up three days ago, who put out the bounty? I asked. She turned away from me in her chair and started to rummage through a file cabinet behind her. After a few moments passed, she pulled out a sheet of paper and placed it on the desk. Here it is. Take a look for yourself. Honestly, I don't see the need to post this thing around here since you are so far away. I looked down at the paper lying in front of me. Saw a very nice drawing done of me right in the middle of the paper. Wanted poster, I guess. Though the picture did show me with a long ponytail still. On the top, I saw in bold letters, Wanted, Dead or Alive. Reward, 2,000 caps. I took in a deep breath and continued to read the rest of what was written under my sketch. Shadow Star, a.k.a. The Courier. Crimes, murder, treason, theft, massive destruction, terroristic activities, possession of dangerous items, torture, and being extremely annoying. Known to travel around New Pegasus area, but it's also been seen in the Twin Cities and the Kingdom. Shadow Star is extremely dangerous and known to travel with a freelance griffin, a rogue dashite, and a monster bat pony. She is to be taken dead or alive, and her body to be brought to any enclave skyport near New Pegasus for verification. Payment will not be given if any of her items are not with her body. If the requirements are met, ask for Sergeant Winter Frost or Captain Strife. If she is taken in by a dashite, that dashite's crimes will be forgiven. I slammed my hoof down on the wanted poster. God, this is fucking damn it. Of course it's Winter Frost. The fucking Pegasus just can't leave well enough alone. And where does he get off putting up a reward like that? She shrugged. No idea. I don't know much about this Winter Frost. The other pony, however, I know her very well. Captain Strife is a mare who runs some of the Black Ops missions for Thunderhead. Though she's only been around that Cloud City for a couple of years. Originally, she's from Stratus comes from a long line of ponies who have run things in that city. Her father was one of the High Council ponies who died in Mill City Tower, if I remember right. So she's working with Winterfrost to take me down, huh? Because I killed her dad? Okay, at least she has a good reason. Winterfrost, though, he just hates me because I locked him up in some cells in the basement of an Alicorn lounge home. Oh, and I did kill most of his team and humiliate him when he tried to kill me a few weeks back. I said. You... Locked him up in an alicorn's basement. And you live to tell the tale about it? She asked, shouting shocked. Oh, the alicorn I know isn't bad, I said with a wave of the hoof. She cocked an eyebrow at me. I've never met an alicorn who's not brainwashed or crazy. Normally they're both. I've never met any apart from the ones in Frosty Summit. The Violet's kind and helps ponies. She said she used to be controlled by something called the Goddess, I think? But some amulet she was sent to retrieve for her freed her from it? Really? I had no idea it was even possible for any of them to be freed from the control of Unity. Well, if you happen to see any around here, I don't expect them to help you with anything apart from trying to make you one of them, Bottlecap said. Hopefully, with your help, I won't have to worry much about it, I said. She leaned back in her chair again, tapping a hoof under her chin as she thought. After a moment, she said... The problem is that it's very rare for traders to even go as far as New Pegasus. I know one caravan who makes the trip, but they won't be back this way for at least another month and a half, maybe longer. With red eye slavers in Philadelphia and the Alicorn problems near Canterlot and Maripony, a lot of ponies don't like making the trip. Even if they did, most of the land between New Pegasus and even Canterlot is either mostly unpopulated land with a lot of dangerous monsters or run by half-mad tribal ponies. Even if I knew a caravan who would make the trip, it would just take you at least a month or more to make it there on hoof. What about flying? Isn't there some dashites around here who could get me there on a sky carriage or something? I asked. She laughed. First of all, 
The only Dashite I know around here is a friend of mine named Glory. And she can't go flying off anywhere anymore. A Thunderhead doesn't make Dashites very often, so they're rare. Even if you could make it to Manhattan, you'd still have a very hard time finding one. The other problem is, you don't just find sky carriages lying around. Lastly, the Enclave won't let you fly away with one. They'll shoot you down before you got past flank. So what you're telling me is that I'm screwed? I asked. Well, how did you get here? Why can't you just use the same way to get back home? Even if you were taken here by some pony, I'm sure a mare like you could find a way to use that mode of transportation to get home again. She asked. I was teleported here. She replied. <laughs> sure you were. She said, laughing. I may not know a lot about magic, but it's a long way for some pony to just teleport. Trust me, I was. And it was too long and complicated to explain. Let's just say that I can't go back the same way. I said with a sigh. And then I don't think I can help you. I might be able to get you as far as Manhattan, but that's it. Unless... She broke off what she was saying and started to dig in the filing cabinet again. Unless what? I asked. She finally seemed to find what she was looking for and pulled out a huge book. She placed it down on her desk, opened it, and started looking through the pages. Finally, she stopped on one and smiled a little. Unless you don't mind working with a slightly mad and strange stallion and his equally strange crew? How mad and how strange of a crew? I asked. Well, he's mostly harmless. Same for his crew, unless you are in a firefight with him. Then you'd better hope the goddesses love you. He's a sky pirate that calls himself Captain Gunny. He has a couple of loose screws and talks in the third person. But he'll never do anything, uh, do anything for the right price. He's the only other pony I know who's made trips to New Pegasus, even lost Alicorn in the past. Isn't scared one bit of the Enclave, Alicorns, ghouls, monsters, you name it. He's also a pony of his word. If he makes a deal with you and you don't double cross or lie to him, he'll get you home, she said with a smile. The only problem is that I don't have many caps. Hell, I don't have my guns or armor. How can I play the stallion to get me there? I asked. And that's the best part. You see, Captain Gunny owes me about 5,000 caps right now for the goods. He's been avoiding me because he's had bad luck with getting loot over the past couple of weeks. If I can get him to agree to help you get home, I'll forgive his debt, she said, shutting the book. And you're just going to do this out of the goodness of your heart? I asked, skeptical of such a kind gesture. She laughed again. Hell no! I'm just going to hire you to deliver a few things for me. Finding a good courier is next to impossible around here, and with recent events. I can't get some goods delivered at chapel. Also, I've heard a few things stacking up that I need brought to a few towns out that way. A package to a small settlement near Manhattan called New Appaloosa. Two letters for a couple of ponies in the kingdom, and a few things I meant to send out with that caravan going to your area. If you do this for me, I'll pay your way home by forgiving Captain Gunny's debt. I'll also throw in a few weapons and some armor to help keep you safe. That was the best thing I heard all day. I smiled and said, Deal. So when can I leave with this Captain Gunny? Last I heard, he was headed for flank, but he should be back here around tomorrow or the next day. I'll put out word that I found him a way to pay off his debt to me. I'll set it all up and then find him, send him to chapel. I think you should go there first to make this deliver for me and see about finding a place to sleep for the next couple of days, she said. I don't see anything wrong with that, though I'm not sure how I'm going to carry all this stuff on my own, I said. Oh, don't worry about it, Shadow. What I need for you is to bring to chapel isn't big, and the rest of it I'll have loaded onto Gunny's ship when he arrives here. You'll have to go to the southeast first to get that one delivered next done to New Appaloosa, but it shouldn't take long. I'll send a manifest on who's expecting deliveries and which packages or letters goes to who, she said. I shrugged. Sounds fine to me. So who's the pony I need to find in chapel? Funny you should ask. My friend Morning Glory, Blackjack's mare friend, I'm sending her some things to... Help a couple of her friends who are sick right now. And though I have to warn you, Glory looks like a famous pony right now. 
thanks to Killing Joke. She said with an ever-growing smile. Really? I didn't know Killing Joke did that. I said. Neither did I. But let's just say that she has to keep her face hidden from the Enclave right now because of it. And that's the Killing Joke part. If you need to find her, check either Star House, and just outside of town, and let her know that I've sent you to check in, or check with a filly named Charity in town. She runs the general store. Or maybe just go right over the store. It's easier to find and safer, Bottle Cap said, getting to her hooves and heading to the door. Now, let's go get you some weapons and armor. Sounds like a plan, I said, getting up and following her out. As I pushed open the door to her office, I saw her glance of a Mark II. I was going to ask you before, what kind of pit buck is that? I've never seen one like it before, she asked. At first, I didn't want to say anything about the Mark II, but she'd already done so much to help me, so I decided that I could trust her a little. It's a prototype created by Stable Tech. There's only three of them in all of Equestria. I was told by a ghoul who was helping with this that it was used to test some things that were going to be put into what's called a Delta model pit buck. Some of the things built into this were used for the Delta models, but he said that a model was never put into circulation because of the mega spells. And that's amazing. How did you get your hooves on something like that? Now you're interested in selling it, I know of a few collectors who would pay a huge amount for something like that. She said. No. It's not for sale, and to be honest, I don't really know, want any pony to have it. A lot of bad things could happen if this fell into the wrong hooves. It's one of the reasons the Enclave are after me. Same for the Steel Rangers. As for how I got it, my mom left it for me when I left my stable years ago. I said as she led me down an aisle. And that's too bad, but I can understand. At least, can you tell me a couple of features that it has? She asked. Why do you care? I couldn't help but ask. She shrugged. I know one mare who has a Delta model. I just want to see what the difference is between that one and the one that was used to test his features. Well, I don't know everything on it, really. I haven't taken the time to learn all I can, I said as she led me to a weapons table. I know it has a built-in broadcaster. Its hacking software is better than any pit buck I've ever heard seen or heard of. It's impossible to steal. Hell, you can't even get it off unless you know how, and... I know that all three of the Mark II's are... I stopped talking as something about my Mark II came back to me. She looked back, asking... Are what? Nothing. I just forgot something about them that I'd rather keep to myself. I said. Oh, come on. It's not like I'm going to tell any pony. She said. It's not like I don't trust you, but if this information is secret and I don't want to risk any pony knowing about it, not even you. I said. Oh, fine. Be that way. Well, let's just get you outfitted, she said, turning to the merchant to see about getting me what I needed. As she did, my heart started to race, because I just remembered a key feature of the Mark II that no other pit buck had, something that Rusty told me about when I first went to Trotston. The Mark IIs were all linked through the MAS-EBS towers all over Equestria. One pony with a Mark II could communicate with another from anywhere as long as there was an MAS EV tower around. I'd already seen a couple in the distance as I walked here with Rampage. I could get a message to my friends. Shadow, what kind of weapons do you like to use? Bottlecap asked. I smiled as I turned back to the mayor and started to tell her what I would need to get home. An hour later, I was making my way towards the marker on my map for chapel. I had a new set of combat armor that was reasonably strong, an okay shotgun, a 45 caliber pistol, and an old zebra sword that was in very good condition, plus enough ammo to keep me safe for a long time. I felt a lot better than I had when I first woke up. Bottle Cap made sure to give me some food just in case I needed it, and a fresh canteen filled with clean water. Mega Mart was far behind me now, and according to my map, I'd be in chapel soon. I'd waited until I was far from the huge building packed with merchants to test my idea about the Mark II. I wanted to make sure I talked that least bite, so I could tell them where I was and how I was getting home. That's if my friends were still alive. I was still scared that something bad had happened to them while Aquila was in control. That good Aquila told me that I would get my memories of what my body happened to me while she was gone once I took over again, 
So far, I see nothing. I saw a small path that led off the road and up towards a ridge that overlooked a destroyed town not far away. So I headed up to it so no pony could see me while I contacted my friends. Once I was done with that, I could finish my mission to chapel. I know that there is another thing in that town I may be able to do while I'm there. If Mom's notes were right about Uncle Stryker and his research of Falling Shadows and where he left it. I was almost at the top of the ridge when I decided to sit down and next to a small rock. My EFS wasn't showing me anything. No pony was up here, and this spot was harder to see from the road. I lifted my foreleg up and used my magic to tune into the broadcaster tab. I'd never seen, or was told, how this was done. But a feeling if I just tried hard enough, I'd figure it out. Sure enough, it only took me a few moments to find a section under the broadcaster that said, Mark II Enter Broadcast Channel Link. I clicked on it and watched as both the Mark IIs showed up on my screen. I selected Cookie Bytes Mark II and opened the text channel. Text flew up in my vision as the connection was made. According to attempting to connect with Pipbuck Mark II AB, connection found, checking signal MASEVS towers, signal moderate, towers 112, 37, 69, and 40 aren't broadcasting properly. Signal strong enough to make audio communication and location if needed. Broadcast open. You are now on an open channel with Pipbuck 2 AB. I took in a deep breath and slowly let it out. Cookie Bite, this is Shadowstar. Are you getting this? It took a few minutes for something to happen. First, I wasn't sure the message got through, even though they said it was connected, until Cookie Bite's voice came out of my Mark II. Shadow, is that really you? Or are you so that bitch Aquila trying to play tricks on us? It's me, Bite. I'm alive and mostly well. I said, feeling relieved as the young mare's voice echoed out on my mark, too. Prove it! She demanded. How? It's not like I can show you or anything. I said. Likely story. I can't trust who you are until you prove it to me. Until then, this line is closed. She said. Bite. Don't close the connection. I'm not sure how long it'll take me to get back. I yelled into the Mark II. Before she could answer me, I heard Stardust's voice in the background. Bite, who are you talking to? I'm not sure. She says she's Shadow, but how do we know? She yelled. Hey, let go of my hoof! Stardust's voice sounded closer now as he said, Shadow, is that really you? I rolled my eyes. Yes, it's me. Now can you two stop with the suspicion and let me talk? I'm not sure, Shadow. It's hard to know if it's really you or Aquila. Is there any way you can prove who you are, who you say you are? I asked. No. I mean, Aquila has all my memories, so it's not like I can just use something I would know for that kind of thing. I said, then slammed the pitbuck against the rock. Damn it. This is bullshit. Fucking stupid-ass bullshit. That bitch just had to make my life harder than it already is. Oh, well, that works. Yep, that's you, Shadow. I heard Stardust say. Huh? What do you mean? What did I do? I asked. He laughed a little. From the short encounter we had with Aquila and another with Aura, she's not much for cursing like that. I'm glad to hear your voice again. Whatever. If it made him trust me, then I'll work with it. Glad to hear yours, too. Is everything okay? For the most part, yeah. Aquila didn't do much to us when she found us right after she took over. Aura had a run-in with her yesterday, but for some reason Aquila ran away. Stardust said, Is that Shadow? I heard Wingnut yell in the distance. Then he got closer, seeming to ignore Bite's protests. Shadow, you're alive! I chuckled a little. I'm alright, Wingnut. Where are you guys at? Like all my hoof, wingnut, you little bug! Bite yelled. In a minute, Bite, wingnut said. We're at the Shadow Talon's new base in Freedom. Or has been sending your griffins out to find Aquila. After what happened with Stable 28, she's pissed. I felt my heart sink as those words came through my Mark II. What happened to Stable 28? Let me go! Bite said. 
Then the sounds of rustling came from the Mark II, and finally, Byte continued. If you two want to talk to her, then just talk. Don't put my forehoof up and hold me down. It hurts, and you're pushing me into the dirt, and I don't like it. Sorry, Byte, Wingnut and Stardust said in unison. I can hear Byte saying, stupid bugs. I face hoofed. Stable 28, damn it! It took a minute, then Stardust said, Aquila uh, destroyed it. We found out a couple hours ago. No, that can't be right. Why would you go after my old home? There's nothing there that interest her, unless she wanted to hurt me, to make me pay for fighting her for so long. It took me a while to find my voice again. When I did, I asked, Did any pony make it out? Byte answered this time. Only about twenty, maybe a little more. We're still trying to find out everything that happened. A lump stuck in my throat as I asked the next question, the one I feared the most. Milkshake? Balefire? They made it out. Both of them did. Right now the Shadow Talons are helping them get to freedom. But they're shaken and scared, Stardust said. Even though my friend survived this crazy bitch in my head, still, that was a lot of ponies who died, and for what? After the fight to save my home against the Unchained Talons and my crazy former Overmare, only about 300 ponies were left. They were just starting to get back to a normal, stable life. Now most of them are gone. Ponies I grew up with, killed by Aquila, just so she could make me pay. Shadow, I know it's hard to hear. And I'm sure there are a lot of other things that are going to be hard to take. But right now, we need to help you. Where are you? Stardust asked. Before I could answer, the voice I thought I would never hear again came through the speaker. What are you three doing? There's work to be done. I heard a rumor that Aquila was spotted over near Coven. Aura! I yelled, feeling tears of joy when she was... Okay, falling down my face. What was that? Nora asked, her voice getting closer. It's Shadow. She's got control of her body again from the sound of it. Wingnut said. Cut the connection! Nora said, anger filling her voice. Nora, it's really her. Stardust said. I checked. Unless Aquila's gotten better at acting. Hey, put me down! I heard Byte saying. I'm guessing Aura picked up the filly? Listen, if this really is Aquila acting like she's Shadow, I promise I'm going to find you and rip your throat out, you psychotic murder-obsessed she-devil whore. Shut the hell up, Aura. I laughed a bit as I said that. It's me, Shadow. Now put Byte down and please talk to me. I yelled. Ow! Byte said. I'm guessing Aura just dropped her. Are you sure it's her, Stardust? Aura asked. Yeah, I'd stake my life on it, Stardust said. I heard Aura let out a long sigh, and then her tone changed. Now she sounded tired and sad at the same time. Shadow, are you okay? I've been better, but yeah, I'm fine, I said. I could hear her voice, that Aura was holding back sobs as she said, I thought I lost you. You almost did. If it wasn't for Uncle Ori, I don't think I would have made it out of the cage I was put into by Aquila, I said quietly. I don't mean that. I'm talking about that fucking note. Don't get me wrong, I understand what you were thinking at the time, but it doesn't matter right now. When we see each other again... We're going to have a long talk about some trust issues. Not just with me, either. Wind Thrasher wants to rip your head off for lying to her. But that can wait. Right now, I'm just glad you're alive and Aquila isn't controlling you anymore. Where are you? I can come get you. She said. I know. And I'm near Hoofington. Near a town called Chapel? I said. You... Didn't just say Hoofington, did you? She asked, sounded concerned. Yeah, 
I woke up a few hours ago on an old highway near a bone ditch. Thanks to the help of a few ponies here, I was able to secure a way back to New Pegasus. I said. Shadow, you have no idea what it's like out there. That town's crazy. Trust me, I've been there before. I lost Tripwire there. I'm coming to get you. Don't leave Chapel. It's one of the safest places in the area. Aura said. Aura, no. I said. I told you I found a way back. I don't want you flying all the way out here. I'm safe. I'm alive. And I can take care of myself. Stardust chuckled a little. Shadow, you may be able to take care of yourself. But even I know that Hoofington isn't a place you want to be. Let alone trust any pony to get you home. He's right, Shadow. Aura said. Unless you know the right ponies to talk to, you could end up being taken by slavers. There are a lot of them around there, selling ponies like you to a mad pony named Red Eye. I can't just let you trust some random pony to get you home. I'm coming to get you. Damn it, Aura. No. Stop treating me like a fool. I didn't just hire some random pony to get me home. A mare named Bottle Cap who runs Mega Mart over here set it up. From what I can tell, she's a trustworthy pony. I yelled. Bottle Cap set it up? Or asked. Well, that's different. If she's helping you, then I guess you're right about one thing. Still, I don't like the idea of you traveling across the wasteland by yourself with some random pony. I can get there in about three or four days if I travel light. Can you at least wait until I get there so I can keep you safe on the way home? The stallion will be leaving in a couple of days. You may just miss us, and I have to make another stop in New Appaloosa to make a delivery for Bottle Cap. And that's how I managed to get passage home. If you really have to come here, then at least meet us there, or in a town on my way back. I said. She sighed, then gave in. Fine. But New Appaloosa is further than Hoofington. I know a town near Canterlot. It's about 50 kilometers northwest of there. If you're heading towards New Pegasus from New Appaloosa, then you should fly near it. I'll meet you there. How will you get a hold of you once I arrive? I asked. Don't worry, and I'll find you. Just get there as fast as you can. Nora said. I smiled a little. I may not like the idea of her thinking I can't take care of myself, but it was also very sweet of her. I could understand where she was coming from. She was scared of something that was going to happen to me after what happened over the past few days. So I said, Fly safe, and if everything goes well, I'll see you all soon. You too, Aura said. Then she raised her voice. Stardust, go find Solstice and tell her I need to see her. Wingnut, tell Wind Thrasher to inform Grim what's happening. Her voice faded away as she walked away from Bites Mark II. When it was gone, Bites sighed and said, It's been nuts around here after you got taken over, Shadow. Your uncle told us what he did to help you, but most of us didn't believe it. I can understand why. I'm still having nightmares about what I saw in the cage. How are you holding up, Bite? I asked. I'll be fine. I've been able to help the Shadow Talents make this place a proper base, and they're already taking contracts. Well, the ones that, who aren't trying to help Aura find you, that is. V's been a big help. She's like, uh, she was born to run a talent company. She's been taking away most of the business from the Unchained Talons, who are now working out of Crimson Canyon. Bite said, sounding tired. So the Red Talons are dead, then? The company itself, I mean. I asked. Yeah, from what I heard, Gina and Archer, aka Apollo, are leading them. They're strong, but unorganized. The Shadow Talons are doing everything they can to keep it that way. But that's the story for another time. You need to worry about getting home. Aura needs you. We all need you. New Pegasus needs you. Things have been starting to go a bit awry around here after the news went out that the courier was killed, Bite said. What sort of things are happening? I asked. The Romans pushed further into the area. The NLR lost two more bases and are now blocking the advance of the Romans near River Point. We've been hearing about the hidden Sandsteel Rangers are just also attacking the NLR and New Appleton, as we're making life hell for us, too she said, letting out a long sigh. Just get back here and show every pony that you're alive and help us. I'll do my best, Bite. Stay safe, and 
Let me know if something happens. I'll be sure to make it so you can find me if you need to. I'll keep the Mark II's location open to yours. I said. Okay. Rusty showed me how that feature works. I'll contact you when Nora is leaving, too. Stay safe, Shadow. She said and cut the connection. I sighed again, then got back to my hooves. I was about to head back down the path to the road when I noticed something poking out from the top of the ridge. Figuring it couldn't hurt to look at what was up there, I went to check it out. The top of the ridge wasn't much further. It only took me a minute or so to reach it. At the top, I found an old campsite. It was small, just a single tent and what looked like it was starting to rot, a fire pit and a few scraps of cans of cram and some rotten food. Hello, is any pony up here? I asked as I drew my shotgun and slowly advanced. No pony answered, so I trod over to the tent and looked inside. A single bed roll for two was set up in one of the corners. A forgotten satchel in another corner. A rotting map laying next to the bed roll. And a few more cans of cram sitting near the map. I wrinkled my nose as I walked further into the small tent. I smelled like death in here. And, looking closer at the bedroll, I saw a few spots of blood on it and a black feather. Picking it up, I looked at it closer, saying to myself, That's a griffin feather. I want to have a talent company from around here using this place to live. It would explain so much cram being around here. I wandered over the satchel and picked it up. There was a small picture sewn into the bag. It looked like a wire connected to a mine. Under it, the initials TW were sewn in as well. My eyes went wide as I remembered seeing that picture before. It was a cutie mark. Tripwire's cutie mark. I dropped the satchel as I realized where I was and who the black fourth feather belonged to. This is where Laura lost Tripwire, I said as I looked around the tent more. Now that I was inside the small strip of canvas and there was a recorder sitting next to the tent flap and the small mat set to the tools on it, pieces of another energy weapon, half assembled. Picked up a recorder and checked it, and found a recording inside. I pulled it out, then checked the satchel and found another recording inside of it, and a few plans for some new weapons Tripwire was working on. I wondered to myself why Aura left this all behind. Was Tripwire's death really that hard on her, that she couldn't even take a few things to remember her by? I looked down at the recordings and made a decision. I popped the one from the satchel into my Mark II and let it play, as I looked around the camp. A sweet voice started to play out of it as I walked around the tent. Hey brother, it's me, Trip. I know you're probably still pissed as hell that I decided to run off with Aura after she was kicked out of the Red Talons the other day. Also, I know you don't like the idea of me traveling around Hoofington like this, but I know I can set up a good trade route down here. Aura told me about a mare who would love to have another caravan that goes from Hoofington to New Pegasus. Her name's Bottle Cap, and she's agreed to set something up tomorrow. Listen, brother, don't be mad at Aura for this trip. It was my idea, not hers. And as much as I know you don't like me falling for a griffin, just remember that you can't help who you'll fall in love with. She went on after a moment. I'm making you this message so you can try and calm down a little, and because I love you. I also love Aura, and I don't care what she is. So please be happy for me. I'll be home in a couple of months, and by then I'm hoping you'll get this message. I'm sending it out with the caravan that's leaving tomorrow, after our meeting with Bottle Cap. Just remember that I'm still your little sister, and that I love you. We're the only family we have, and I'll always be there for you, just like you're always there for me. So please, I hope you'll be happier once I see you again. Also, I left the plans for that new energy spear on your lab. Don't you dare mess with it! I'm planning on finishing my project when I get home. The one I gave Aura was just a prototype, and I want you uh, to give her one of the new ones, once I have time to finish it. So keep it safe for me. Anyway, I have to go. I love you, Tariff, and I'll see you in a couple months. The recording cut out, and I felt a fresh wave of tears coming from me as I pulled it out and tucked it into my new saddlebag. She must have died not long after making this. Tariff never got to say goodbye to his sister. He never got this last message from her. He lived all these months thinking Aura was the one who made her go to Hoofington. I sighed, then sniffed, and said, I'll give this to your brother, Trip. You have my word. 
But Cam didn't have much apart from a couple of bottle caps. An unopened bottle of Sparkle Cola. I was just finishing up when I noticed a small mound of dirt a few meters away from the camp. My heart started to race as I realized what it was. I moved closer to it and saw I was right. A small sign made out of a piece of wood had fallen over from the head of the grave. It read, Here Lies Wire Trap. A pony who was loved. I ran my hoof over the small pile, then used my magic to press the plank back into the ground. I sniffed again, then said a small prayer to the goddesses, finishing it by saying, Don't worry, Trip. I'll take care of Aura for you. I hope you look down and see how much better she's doing. I'm sorry you had to die so that I could find my soulmate. So, thank you for loving her. Rest in peace. I went back into the tent and gathered the tools I'd found and the pieces of the energy weapon Trip was working on, and put them in my saddlebags, too. Once that was finished, I started walking on my way back down the path. As I did, I put a second recording into my Mark II, and listened to what I guess was Trip's last words. Before I pressed play, though, something about the camp was bugging me, even though I walked away from it. Or I said the Trip was attacked and raped by raiders, if that was true, then why did the camp look like Aura had only taken time to bury her lover and run? Maybe the recording would help. I started it up. Again, Tripwire's voice echoed out of my Mark II. Only this time she sounded weak and like something was wrong with her. Hey, Aura. I know you said to get some rest, but I can't seem to sleep. I think that food we were given by those Pegasus traders was a little rotten, because I can't seem to keep my food down now. Also, my head's hurting real bad, and I keep hearing things. She started to giggle, a giggle that sent a chill down my spine as she said, <laughs> I, it's funny, because normally I can't stand watching you eat that cram stuff, but now I think it looks good. I can't seem to keep the apples down, so I might try some of your food. I heard the sound of one of the cram cans being opened, followed by the slurping sound and more giggling. It's not bad. A little chewy. But I think I can get used to it. Maybe. Maybe I need something fresher. <laughs> Strange. My foreleg won't stop itching, no matter how much I bite it. She said. Then I heard what sounded like red flesh ripping a little. Oh. Look. I'm bleeding. I can't even feel it. Why am I so hungry now? So hungry. The sound faded as Tripwire seemed to walk away from the recording, leaving it running. I looked down at my pipbook and saw the recording was two hours long, so I used my magic to start speeding up the recording. I heard nothing but dead air. Then some pony spoke, but it was too quick to make out, so I reround it and found the spot. It was two minutes before the recording ended. Trip? You still awake in there? I finished the meeting with Bottle Cap, and she's willing to work with you. But she wants to meet you first, once you're feeling better. I picked up some meds that I think will help your fever and stomach pains. Aura's voice said distantly. I heard hoofs walk by the recording, and Trip saying, <laughs> You're back, Griffin. Trip? What's wrong? What happened to your foreleg? It looks like an animal chewed on you. Aura said, her voice filling with worry. I'm so hungry. Please make it stop. Trip yelled, her voice getting more insane sounding. I know. I'll eat you. Trip, what are you doing? Stop. Aura yelled, as the sound of talons hitting flesh, then a body hitting the ground. What the hell, Tripwire? What's gotten into you? No. Just stay down. Something's wrong with you. Just lay down so I can look. Trip! No! The recording ended there. I was at the bottom of the path now, and about to go back on the road as the recording ended. I was shaken as I processed what I just heard. Trip hadn't been attacked by raiders at all. Before I could tell, she had gotten sick, and she was acting a lot like the raider I ran into near Pony Joe's. If that was true, then what happened to her? How did she die? I took the recording out of my Mark II and slipped it into my new saddlebags. One thing was for certain, 
Oro was going to have to tell me the truth about what happened to Tripwire. Worse, I needed to find out from somebody around here what kind of things were going on with the raiders in this area. Because as crazy as the ones I've met are, they at least had their wits about them and didn't crave pony flesh like... Not like the ones here. So I pushed on towards chapel. The rest of the trip to chapel went on without much incident, apart from the rain that started to fall again. Unlike in New Pegasus, where the rain helped cool you down from the dry heat in this area, here, the humidity got worse. My combat armor didn't breathe like my duster, or my barding did. By the time I'd reached the small town, I felt like I was swimming in my own sweat, even with the rain falling hard on my mane and face. The first thing I noticed about chapel was the church. Its high steeple, visible half a kilometer away. There was a river that seemed to border the dark, foreboding city of Hoofington. The city itself made me uneasy, but I'm not sure why. It felt as if something deep inside the dark place was calling to me, begging me to come closer to it. It wasn't a cry for help, though. No, it was like a predator stalking its next meal. I had to rip my eyes away from the sight and kept heading to the town, down the muddy streets and dark buildings. It wasn't a big place, but Chapel did have a kind of charm to it. I wanted to go look at the church, wondering what the goddess or goddesses they worshipped were, but I kept my distance. From the look of the place, something bad happened here recently. Honestly, the whole town looked like it had a small battle. I did my best to ignore it and started heading for a building Bottle Cap told me to watch out for. She said it was an old post office being used as a general store? I said to myself, then spotted the building not far from the church. I walked over and pushed the door open. A little bell rang as the door struck it. I walked in and it almost stumbled into a blue stallion. He stopped and took a step back. Uh, sorry, didn't see you there, he said, his eyes downcast. I noticed right away that he was not much taller than I was, maybe a few inches, more the height of a normal mare than a stallion. He had a light blue coat and a darker blue mane, with a desperado hat on his head. His cutie mark was very strange, however. It was a symbol for male, with twenty-one dots under it. I stepped out of his way, saying, It's my fault. I should have been watching where I was going. It's quite alright. My mind's been... in a fog as of late. Are you new around here? He asked. You could say that. I'm making a delivery for Bottle Cap. Are you the stallion who runs the place? I asked. He smiled a little, but didn't seem to have much humor in him at the moment. No, I was just checking on something I'm waiting for. Charity said it hasn't come in yet, unless you're the one who has her order. It's possible. Bottle Cap said it needed to be here today. It's for a mare called Morning Glory, but I have to deliver it here to the pony who runs the store, I said. I'm Shadowstar, by the way. P-21. And Morning Glory is a friend of mine. You must have what I was sent to get. P-21 said. Who's this? And why is she tracking mud into my store? A filly's voice said from behind the counter. Looking past P-21, I saw a yellow filly standing in the corner. Then I looked back to where I dragged mud into the shop. I blushed, saying, I'm sorry. It's been raining for a while, and I didn't realize I got so much mud on my hooves. I'll clean it up, though. She gave me a skeptical look. Were you raised in a barn, or are you just stupid? Wipe your hooves before you enter a building. Stable, actually. But like I said, I'll clean it up. You have my word, I said. Walking back to the door, opening it, and wiping my hooves on the welcome mat I hadn't noticed on my way in. Once that was finished, I looked around, saw a broom next to the other door, and used my magic to pull it over to me. First, I used my magic to move the bigger chunks of mud off the floor and throw it back outside. Then I swept away the rest as best I could. When I was done, P-21 said, Well, at least you're polite. I couldn't help but laugh at that. Normally, I'm not, but I do try to clean up the messes I make. The filly laughed too, then jumped off the desk and walked over to me. I'll say this, it's not every day that some random mare comes in here and doesn't ask me where the owner is or to fetch my parents. So thanks for that. I shrugged. 
I travel with a couple of kids myself. They're smart little shits. Though to be honest, I didn't know you were the owner. I just guessed when you said, Who's this mare and why does she track mud into my shop? You got a point? So, are you here to buy something or are you just here to breathe in the fresh air? She asked, jumping out of my back and then the counter behind it. I have a delivery from Mega Mart. Bottle cap sent me? I said, reaching into my saddlebags and pulling out a package. I was told it was for morning glory. I set it on the counter and she opened it quickly. Sure is. And a couple of small things I asked for, she said. Then took some of the items inside, which looked like medical equipment, put them into a bag, then looked over at P-21. Got my caps? The blue stallion just sighed, then tossed a small bag of caps onto the counter. Yeah. Morning Glory said that should cover it, and a little more for getting us to us so quickly. The villa counted them for a moment, then picked the bag, jumped back onto the counter, and gave it to P-21. Then there you go. So how's Scotch doing? I just sat there, watching P-21's face, went from sad-looking to painful. Glory said she's doing better, but anything can help at this point. But she has hope. The filly smiled a little. Glad to hear it. Well, P-21, you should get back. Thanks for the help, Charity. I'll let you know if anything changes. P-21 said, heading for the door. It was nice to see you, Shadow. Likewise. I replied. Then my eyes went wide and I looked back at the filly. Wait, your charity? The filly laughed. Sure am. I'm guessing my reputation as a fair and brilliant shop owner is spreading. No, it's just a strange mare named Rampage said I should look for you if I'm ever in chapel, I said. P-21, who was just about to walk out into the rain, looked back at me, saying, You know Rampage. I shrugged. I wouldn't say that I know her. It's more like she saved me some, from some raiders a few hours ago. She's the one who introduced me to the bottle cap. The small stallion shut the door, then asked, Where did you run into her? Also, did she have another mare with her? A white unicorn with robotic legs? Kind of stupid, drinks too much, and has a sex drive that would make a stallion blush? Wow, that was a lot. I frowned, then said, No, it was just her. She told me she was looking for her friend Blackjack. She said she's security. I heard Charity face hoof. Oh, great. Another fan of that moron. I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Honestly, I don't know much about her apart from the fact that DJ Pony likes to talk about her on the radio sometimes. When I do bother to tune in. I said. Huh. I thought every pony around the hoof knew about Blackjack. B21 said. Me too. Hey, Shadow, have you been living under a rock, or do you just not know how to use that strange pip buck of yours? If that's the case, I'll buy it off you. I'll give you a thousand caps for it. Jerry said. It's not for sale, I said, glaring at the strange filly. And I'm not from around here. I'm from New Pegasus. I don't listen to the radio often because I'm sick of hearing about the damned radio pony talking about me like I'm some kind of hero or a monster. Depending on what day it is. Hell, he even give me the name of the Courier. P-21 didn't seem to know my other name, thank the goddesses. He just laughed a little. What is it with DJ giving funny names to mares he thinks are heroes? For security, then the stable dweller, now the Courier. I mean, you all do have names. Don't worry, though, you're not alone. Little Pip, the stable dweller, doesn't seem to like her nickname that much either. I've learned to just embrace it. I said with a sigh. Charity finally spoke up, and when she did, her voice was quiet, almost like she was scared. The courier? Well, the reports said you died. I remembered hearing that myself. Yeah, I heard. That's strange, because DJ Pony reported that since the incident, when you vanished in a blast of red magical light, you haven't been seen since, Charity said. Her eyes looked like she was in a daze. I have to tell Racer and Tide. They're still crying in my room. Wait, who are Racer and Tide? I well, hope to see you again, Shadow. And with that, he limped out of the shop. 
I noticed as he went that he has a leg brace on. He must have gotten hurt recently. Before I could think about it more, I was tackled to the ground by a filly and colt. The colt saying, Is that really you, Shadow? I looked up to see two young faces inches away from mine. Um, do I know you two? The filly gasped, then looked over at the colt. Racer, we forgot to introduce ourselves. They both jumped off and stood up straight. The filly was a deep blue with a teal and pink spiraled mane. The colt had the same coat color as the filly, but his mane was black and yellow. They both bowed with the colt, then said, I'm Racer. This is my sister, Tide. It's an honor to meet you, Courier. I felt a little strange to have two fools I'd never met bowing to me. Hey, now, there's no need to bow or anything. I'm just a normal unicorn. Ty's eyes went big as she said, No, you're not. You saved our friend two months ago. I did? I'm sorry, but I don't know any pony from this area, and I don't remember ever meeting you two, I said. The colt punched his sister's foreleg. See? I told you we should have told her where we came from first. You did not. She yelled, rubbing her foreleg. Okay, no yelling or hitting you two, Charity said from the top of her counter again. Give her a moment to breathe and tell her where you're from before you confuse her more. Right, Razor said. We're from Little Hoof. You saved our friends, Honeysuckle and Wingnut from Cazadors? Now I understood why they were acting this way. Oh, now I get it. You're one of the orphans from Little Hoof. How the hell did you two get all the way out here? I looked down at her hooves, then started to get teary-eyed. Cherry just rolled her eyes, saying, They were captured by slavers a month or so back. They were being brought to Red Eye. Their caravan was attacked by some tribal ponies, I think. They escaped, then managed to get a ride with traders coming this way. Yeah, Tide and I liked them, until we found out they just wanted to sell us to some ponies who think they're royalty, as what they called us, serfs. We managed to escape again, and ride to the Crusaders. They got us here to charity, who's been helping us make a life for ourselves, Razor said. How's Wing not doing? Tide asked as I tried to ponder what I was just told. He's fine. Well, he was the last time I talked to him. He's in freedom with some griffins I know right now. I said. You two were taken by slavers? In New Pegasus? They both shrugged. Tide saying, Yeah, it happens sometimes. Though normally we have no problem escaping. Wingnut was supposed to teach us how to remove bomb collars, but he got his cutie mark and was sent away. I remember him telling me how most of the foals in Little Hoof learned how to move bomb collars to keep slavers from taking them. I had no idea how bad these kids had it, and how smart they were too. I looked at them both and smiled. Well, at least you're safe now, right? Yeah, Charity's is good, Philly, and nice, as long as you're not eyeing her stuff, Racer said. I'm right here, you know, she said with a sigh. Now... Why don't you go back and help the others? I'm sure Shadow has more important things to do. Do we have to? Tide complained. Yes, now go. Charity said with a sigh. Fine. Racer said with disgust. Before they could go, I stopped them, gave them both a hug. For luck. My friend Stardust always says a hug can fix a lot of things. I'll be sure to tell Wing that you two are okay. Same for the mayor, if I ever get a chance to visit Little Hoof again. I'm glad you're okay, Courier. Mr. New Pegasus needs you. Tide said cutely. I did my best to smile. I couldn't destroy their image of me. They wouldn't understand that what New Pegasus needed was for someone to put a bullet through my skull. So instead, I said, You two stay out of trouble, okay? Okay, Racer said. Come on, Tide. Let's see if there's any more snack cakes left. Tide went to run off, but she stopped, then looked back at me, saying, If you ever get the chance to go back to Little Hoof, you should. I'm not sure what's going on there since we left, but the last time I saw the mayor, he was acting strange. It'd be good, I think, for him to see you. It's funny. 
All they've talked about since they got here a few days ago was how great the courier is. Stories about how you helped their friends escape, how you took in one of them, and when he was kicked out of their little town. How you've done everything you can to keep their home safe. They seem to think you were sent here from the goddesses to help keep fillies and colts safe from bad things in the wasteland. Charity said. I just shook my head. I just happened to be in the right, wrong place at the right time. Honestly, I'm the lucky one when it comes to Wingnut. He's held me alive for the past two months, and he's becoming like a little brother to me. I don't know what I'd do without him. You know, it's not every day a pony like you would do that for some foals, she said with a knowing grin. I couldn't just let him get hurt. I've been there. I don't want any fool to grow up in pain. Not like I did, I said. I thought you were from a stable, she asked, pointing at the pit buck. I was raised in one ever since I was six, but I was born in the Enclave, far north in the Crystal Empire. It's a long story, I said. Sounds like it, she said. Then her eyes went wide. Wait, your Enclave? I rolled my eyes. No, I was just born there. I haven't lived there for twelve years. Like I said, it's a long story. Let's just say that my mother ran away from them when I was very young. Smart, Charity said. Yeah, she is. I said with a sigh, wondering if Mom managed to watch the memory orbs yet, and if she was ready to believe I was who I said I was. So, enough of this wishy-washy stuff. I'm here to run a business. Do you need something, or did my bossy older sister just send you here as a male pony? Charity said. I was going to say something about Bottle Cat being her sister when I saw the resemblance and a sense of business, and decided not to bring it up. I do need a couple more things, but sadly I might have left all my caps back in New Pegasus. Come on. You must have something to trade at least. I'll give you a 15% discount since you helped those foals. Charity said. Also, who leaves their caps behind when they go on a trip? I couldn't help but laugh at the offended tone she took when she said that last part. I didn't have the choice in the matter, and no, I had nothing before Bottle Cap gave me this armor and some weapons to me as payment for doing a few jobs for her. Even then, all I really need are some bobby pins and a new screwdriver. Ah, you like to fiddle with locks, huh? P-21 likes that kind of thing, too, Charity said. How about this? I give you the bobby pins and the screwdriver. All I ask is that you don't tell a soul I gave it to you. We'll call it a donation to a good cause. Why would you do that for me? I asked. She shrugged and said, I'm not called Charity because it's cute. I like helping other fillies and colts when I can, and you seem to do the same. But don't think I'll always have crap you can just take. I have my limits. I smiled. Thank you, Charity. She waved a hoof, then jumped back down from the counter and started to look through a box. Just don't make me regret this, she said when she came back up and tossed a box of bobby pins and a screwdriver at me. There you go. I hope you helps. Thanks again, I said as I put the stuff in my saddlebags. Do you by chance know where there's a place I can stay for a couple of days? I'm waiting for transport home. Bottle caps, I should stay here. Well, I'd offer you a place here, but after the attack, I don't have room. I overheard P-21 offer you a room. Head over to Star House and see if Glory or any of them have a room. On the bright side, I'm sure they won't charge you. Charity's out of the grin. Thanks, I guess. Well, from the looks of it, the rain's letting up. I should head over there now, I said, turning to leave. A shadow, Charity said. I turned to look at her. Watch your step around here, okay? There are a lot of bad ponies around right now, and a unicorn like you will attract their attention. Can do. See you later, Charity, I said as I headed out the door. It didn't take me long to notice I was out of the post office, turned trading post, to find Star House. It wasn't that far outside of town and easy to spot now that the rain was mostly gone. I was interested to meet this glory pony after what Bottle Cap told me about her. I was also interested in finding out what she meant by she was said killing joke made her look like a famous pony. 
I also just wanted a dry spot to sit down and try and figure out what happened over the past few days. While Aquila had my body and why I could barely feel the crazy bitch. I made my way up to the door and knocked. A mare's voice echoed from the inside. P-21, get the door! I don't want to answer it looking like this. P-21, where are you? P-21! Lacuna, are you really gone too? Why do I have to do everything around here? I was about to rethink my idea of staying here when the door was thrown open, and I found myself face to face with Rainbow Dash. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Courier rank 1. You've traveled your entire journey as a courier for the Question Express. So long, in fact, that ponies even in Hoofington and further have heard your name. Due to your reputation, you now gain a small discount from vendors, and gain plus 15 to your barter skill with every rank of this perk. 